Hey, you little monkeys. No, you ain't monkeys. These are the monkeys here. Flying monkeys. What are we doing today? Oh, look at this little bug here. See that? See those? They're having sex. Isn't that something? Can you imagine that bug sex? That's what that is. These are called... Welcome to Florida. These are called love bugs. We got them going on now. I mean, these things are flying everywhere. And they got an acid in them. And if you don't get them off your vehicle... Uh, yeah, they just... They just eat holes right into your paint job. They're beautiful. Uh, what are we doing today, guys? We're playing with our flying monkeys here. I just gave them some more pollen. They are going... The monkeys are going crazy over pollen today, which is good. Get rid of this weed. I don't need it crawling. Ant. It's an ant ladder. That's what that is, an ant ladder. Uh, oxalic acid. Give them another round. I've been doing it every week. See if we can't get a handle on it. We'll do another. We'll do another alcohol wash here. And so what I'm doing today is just running around. Gives you an opportunity to uh, look at your bees. And uh, give them another squirt of the oxalic acid. What I've got here is, uh, is 600 milliliters of water, 600 grams of sugar, 45 grams of oxalic acid crystal. And what I did was took... Measured out my 600 milliliters of water, threw them in a saucepan, heated it up on the stove, got it pretty hot, dumped my 600 grams of sugar in it, and then I took my, there's 45 grams of oxalic acid in this recipe, so I split the two. You can see these two jars are equal. This will be enough here for at least a dozen, 14 hives, somewhere in there, depending on what you got, whether it's nukes or full-size hives and you want to shoot 25 25 milliliters for a 5 frame nuke and 50 milliliters for a 10 frame but this this is 8 frame I don't have any 10 frame stuff I'm getting away from all the 10 frame eons ago that's all I had was 10 frame but I sold all that stuff out and now all the things I build now are 8 frame why because I'm getting old and I don't want to lift that heavy stuff so we're going to do five frames and eight frames. That's the trick, okay? When you get to be an old fart, you're going to switch over, all right? You young whippersnappers can hump those 90-pound 10-frame boxes all day long. I know you can because I used to do it. But as we age, uh, Clint Eastwood, like Clint Eastwood said, says, Every man must know his limitations, all right? Keep that under your, keep that it locked into your little hair-covered computer, all right? So that's what we're going to do. I've got, I've got patties. I'm going to go around and throw on some patties today. Beautiful day today. Look at that Florida sun. You don't have that same sun up saying you know canada or michigan that we do we have a totally different sun and it's extremely hot let me tell you so anyway we've got some patties made up here and these keep i keep in the freezer but i'll tell you what you take them out of the freezer and it don't take long for them to uh, loosen right up for you within minutes yes all right you should wear gloves with this. Uh, I, like I said, you should wear gloves with this. Let's go around and check this little, these little sweethearts here and see how they are doing. I came out here the other night and uh, I, the, we've got Brazilian pepper coming in here now, and I put on some jars of feed. And I'll tell you what, you, I pull these jars off here, and I do it quickly. 
these girls, I mean, were all of them. Every hive I got was slap ass vicious. They were vicious, let me tell you. But they seem to be that way every year on Pepper. Well, I don't really know. Take a peek under here. Oh yeah, this colony's fattening up quite nicely. I don't think I'm going to need to add anything more to this hive though. I think it'll winter out just hunky-dory like it is. Yes, I do think that. Something I forgot to do, and I need to go shut my camera off and go back and doing it. We're going to change all these out. These have been in long enough. And, uh, I found a good way to get this propolis out of here. Settle down, you flying monkeys. Uh, take a toothpick and just go in there and poke that out. They're not very deep. Poke that out. And I'm going to put on a new one. I'll be right back, guys. Okay, back at you here. I got them all. I keep them in a Ziploc. And uh, these are nice, brand new, fresh ones, reloaded. And uh, we're going to change them all out today. They've been in there a few months. Not happy guys they're not happy at all settle down girls settle down daddy's here to help I'm just here to please guys that's all I'm here for you got to talk to him sometimes doesn't do any good but I like to talk to him anyway all righty, that one's done. That one is done. I'm going to put the trap on here. You guys have fun with that. One of, my, one of these days I'm going to get a, a lid on here that actually fits this. I usually do all that wood cut stuff in the, in the uh, winter time. Hey, speaking of winter, we're coming on to winter, and guess what's happening on the other end of the world? Howdy, mate. All my Australian beekeepers, yeah. Howdy, mate. I want to know something from you mates down there and down under. We've got a thing in Florida, as you know, you guys call it paper tree, paper bark, whatever. We call it metaluca. I call it punk. We call it punk. That's Florida crackers. We call it punk. And it's coming up here. November, I should start doing its thing. And uh, what I want to know from you Australian beekeepers is what month... What month do you, is your Metaluca punk blooming? For us here in Florida, you're looking at November. So let me know, guys, what you got going on. I'm just curious. I'd be curious. Just being nosy, I guess. 
you guys don't you guys don't mind if I get nosy, do you? Ah, high beetle. We'll smash you. Just gave him an attitude adjustment, that high beetle. This is a trap. I'm going to put in a new trap. <clears throat> Got to give these girls some pollen. I forgot to do that. Like I told you guys once before, I, I don't, I can't chew gum and walk at the same time, I don't guess. I don't know. Oh well. See if I can open this up without getting ate alive. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, all these get re reused. These get reused, guys. Don't throw them away. Reuse them. I'm gonna reuse those. Yes, sir. This doesn't take too long, guys. This operation doesn't take too long. That's that. Give him a fresh trap. Give him a fresh pollen patty. There's some more love. The love bugs are giving my, look at, they're eating it. They're eating that sugar. Yes, they get on it, they get on blooms, everything, they're a pain. We did a video, a beekeeper's pain in the ass. That's these love bugs, okay? But we just gotta deal with it. Welcome to Florida. That's what you have to, some of the things we have to deal with, guys. The way it is. Just the way it is. They've still got a little bit of patty here. I'm not going to give them any more. There's a beetle running around there. So we'll put in a fresh one, fresh trap. Give them about 25 milliliter. I shoot 25 milliliter of varroamite eliminator. Let's call it varroamite eliminator. See how they like that. You betcha. You betcha, you little flying monkeys. Let it throw a little bit more pine needles in my rig here. Uh, 
All right, what do we got on this one? This one has a brand new one. I'm, I'm going to leave that alone. They need a little more patty on them though, so we'll give them that. Here's a little small one. Chew on that, girls. This side was really testy the other day. I'll tell you what, man, these little boogers were t coming out and getting me here. These little baby girls here now. Oh yeah. What's going on in here? Anything? Oh yeah. See, they're already putting up, uh, this is brand new comb. I just put this on the other day. This didn't have much of a starter strip in it at all. It just had a piece of string on there. And uh, they're jumping on that. Oh yeah. Yeah, this was empty. This was empty, and look at all the nectar in there. So this, this pepper crop is coming in. This pepper crop is coming on in, guys. And I got kind of a mixed bag of uh, this one. that had some really bad comb, and I dipped it. But they're cleaning it all up, and they're already starting putting in new wax. And I alternated between that and strings. This one don't have a string on it. The next one to it does have a string, string starter strip. See? And they're starting to work on that. So that's good. Spread them out a little bit. Let them fatten these up. All right. Let's give these girls 50 milliliter. There's 50 milliliter. Yep. Throw in a new trap. Just spacing a little bit better. Somebody asked me the other day, why do you stand in front of your beehive to work your bees? And I just tell them, because I'm too lazy to walk to the back, I guess. Oh well. It's 
Some people think I'm a, a great beekeeper, but I sure know how to trick them, don't I, guys? All right, let's go over here. There's a big fat mama here now. Look at the love bug, guys. Are they making love to me or what here? Look at them. Wow. My friend, good friend of mine just moved to Florida and uh, permanently sold a 65 acre farm at Michigan. Uh, I guess he got eat, tired of eating whitetail. I don't know. But uh, he was sitting on a, on a speed beef farm. I called it a speed beef farm because he had more deer on that thing. And uh, I think his wife got tired of eating venison. She's, I think I finally converted her over to uh, ribeye. But I sure like that venison. His buddy's coming down soon. And he whacked a big elk, so hopefully I'll have some elk meat soon. They like to share. Oh, what's going on up here, guys? Is anything exciting here? Let's take a peek in here and see what's up. They should be drawing a bunch of comb. Yes, look at that. Yeah, look at, now it's got kind of a, the pepper, this tree here is not blooming yet. But it should be, last year this thing bloomed and I had red berries all over this thing. This tree was humming with bees. But it's just running a little late. But it's kind of an orangish, it's not a really white uh, wax they pull on this pepper. It's kind of a, kind of a little yellowish color to it. Yeah, they're just they're just slam dunking this thing, guys, full. And you can maybe you can see it. We've still got some drones going here. I was wondering where they were hiding. I hadn't seen them in a while. Look at them. Running around here eating that free lunch. Eat all you want, buddy, but I'll tell you what, they're gonna be kicking your butt out of town here real soon. Real soon, they're going to be throwing you out in the cold. Yep. These girls don't have much humor now when it comes to that. Now look at this here frame, guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're putting up... She's got a patch... Nice little patch of larvae in there. But they're they're starting to ring this thing with honey. And she you can see here she's she's putting on this queen this queen here is an exceptional queen. And uh, this I think she's gonna be fine for this year because she's this year's queen. But in the spring, in the spring now, and I need to be looking, I need to be vigilant. In February here, I know it's hard for you guys in Canada and all to believe this, but in Florida, you better be looking. You better be looking in February, guys, when that maple pops, because these girls are going to be setting up some swarming cells on you. And, uh, yeah. And I want to breed from this girl here. She's one of the ones I want to breed from. This one and the one around the corner, the first one we did. So, what am I going to do? <clears throat> I'm going to create artificial swarms like old Joe May does. I like, I like what Joe does. Like I told you before, you see a beekeeper doing something that you like okay it might behoove you to follow along but what he does say you got swarming cells in this hive here and be really looking you're probably going to be too late 
by the time March hits in Florida to be fooling around trying to do what I'm talking about. Go into your colonies, look for swarming cells. Find your baby girl in here. Move her over here or over there. Get a five frame nook. Take her out of here. Put her over there, but before you set her down, take an excluder and put above, above this rail. So she's trapped up in this chamber. She can't get through. The only ones that are gonna pass through are your, are your workers. Put her over here. Put that excluder down. Now she's trapped in there. She's gonna to wanna to swarm. Once they make those cells, and I'm in agree agreement with Joe 110%, once they decide they're gonna swarm, they're going, buddy. I'm telling you, they are heading out of Dodge. So take her over there, you're gonna create a swarm. Shake a bunch of bees, take from this colony over there. All that field force is gonna come back here. Don't be shaking that frame with those queen cells on it. Leave them in here. If you've got lots of them, you can cut them out and make more nooks. But leave them here on this existing hive. Take her over there, now you've created a swarm. And you've also trapped her in there so she can't get out of there. Because you don't want to have happen what's happened over here. Let me show you. Let me demonstrate this. And I don't know if you can see it or not. Right there. They're still in that tree, guys. That's the log hive. That's the killer bee log hive. They're still in that tree. They swarmed out. I've been trying to trick them into coming in over here. They said, no, thank you, Steve-o. But I've noticed they're dwindling. That thing is down probably, I don't know. There's probably two pounds of bees up there left. I do not see any open air comb building. But that's not to say there isn't some hiding underneath that gob. I don't know. But it would be interesting to see what they do, but they're dwindling. If they don't reproduce pretty soon, they're history. They will be history, guys. So yeah, that's kind of the plan for 2020. 2020. Let's give these guys Let's give these guys 50 milliliter. I'm gonna pop a little smoke on them, drive them down, otherwise they're gonna come out of here and wanna kick old Steve-O's booty. Kick my booty. All right. Let's give them a little squirt. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna have to do a... We're gonna have to do us a, a alcohol, alcohol wash here. I don't know. Couple of weeks. I'm giving these girls two patties because these girls are animals over here now. Friggin' animals. I love it. I love it, girls, and want more of it. Keep it coming. I bought more sugar the other day, but I don't see a need to use it because the, the flow has started and they're coming in. It's coming in. They're making comb. I'll tell you what, the only, I had one year in Florida, years ago when a hurricane came in and kicked my ass down in, in Ponte Gorda, uh, I had hives on four-way pallets, and I didn't lose a colony, but what I did lose w was some production, because 
the water flooded. I was on, you imagine I'm on four way pallet, okay? The water came all the way up within one inch of my excluder. I had, it was all 10 frame equipment. I had an excluder on with four stacked shallow supers. That's all I ran back in the day because it was available. And the guy owed me money, like I told the store before. He never paid his honey bill, but I got supplies out of him. And I built up a ton of bees with it. I was getting his queens. Uh, he was converting all the eight frame equipment. He had a semi trailer slap loaded with shallow 10 frame, medium, I mean 10 frame shallows. And he didn't have, I pretty much had all the deep boxes that I built myself and or bought, but I ran, had four for every hive. And I cleaned out that. I cleaned out his uh, tractor trailer with all them supers in it. And uh, the water came up within one inch of that excluder. I didn't lose a single queen. But what I did do was go in there with my forklift, my homemade forklift, by the way. It was made out of, I made it out of a 75 Chevrolet half ton that was wrecked. The body was wrecked, but the chassis and all was great. I stripped it down, bought a mast for it, swapped ends. The mast end was the front end, which was the back end of this vehicle. I put an automatic transmission in it, and, it, and, and I put all-terrain rubber on the ass end of that thing, and that thing worked slick. I went flying in there. I couldn't even see the bottom because they were underwater. I'm, my, my whole rig was right up to the floorboard in this water. I was running around out there. I'm stabbing pallets and setting them on top of other hives. I'm just stacking them up. Stacking them up right out of the water. Leaving the bottom ones in because I couldn't. I had no high ground. The, the, the monsoon was slowing down. So I knew I wouldn't gain any more. And I figured, well, I've got to sacrifice some hives because I have nowhere to put them. And I was on a... A crop that was just screaming. I mean, I was on a Brazilian pepper crop that was just coming in like crazy. Anyway, I stacked them all up. Came back in, uh, came back in a month of harvest. And them bees had cleaned up every bit of that friggin' nasty mess in the bottom. Reestablished that blower nest. I never lost a queen. Uh, I, I, I think... The bee gods were with me, guys. Yep, so that's a little story for you. I have a lot of stories like that, and most of them, and a lot of them are friggin' nightmares, okay? Because when I pulled in and saw that mess, I said, oh, Lord, I need help. And he gave me help, you know? He gave me some help. Okay, settle down, monkeys. I didn't shoot any smoke under that lid before I lifted it. And they didn't appreciate that at all. Imagine that. See, they haven't chewed any holes in the bottom of this yet. But these need to be changed out. I'm going to say, guys, on these traps here, monthly. Change them out monthly. And reuse them. Peel this tape off here. Clean those portholes out. And put some new uh, Max Force down in there. Yes, sir. <laughs> Put some new Max Force in there, and you're ready to rock and roll again. All right, another 50 milliliter on this puppy here. Talking with Sebastian, he experienced he experienced also flooding. And he lost 
he lost a bunch of colonies from what he told me, and that is heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking. When you get into that situation. These guys are pretty fat and happy, mm -hmm. so we're going to give them this big old fat chunk right here. Beautiful day to work bees. It was 70, 72 degrees this morning when I went on my hike. You couldn't ask for anything better, guys. Love this time of year. Absolutely love it. Oh, I went out to check on my hog baiting spot, by the way. And, uh... <laughs> On my camera, I've got no pigs yet. I saw a little 40-pounder walk by about 20 yards out on a camera shot, trail cam shot about a week ago, and it never came over the corn. I got five deer hitting the corn and one six-point. He's he's out like this. He's he's nice. He's nice. And then I got some does and some fawns. They're not they're. They've lost their spots, but anyway, they're fawns, and, uh, yeah. And we got raccoons, of course, eating things up, so we're going to have to... We're going to have to put all those guys on a skinning rack very soon. Oh, yeah, this, this is getting loaded with pepper, guys. This is getting loaded up here. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see it or not, that yellowish, really yellowish color to that wax. It's really a pretty color. Yeah. This is a new trap I put in the other day. This one right here, we're going to leave it. Yeah. I wonder why that finger was still hurting. I had a stinger stuck in it. Duh. Duh. All right. F 50 on this one. 50 on this little girl here. I haven't used this, guys, I have not used this dribble method in years. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't used it in years. Uh, but Sebastian's telling me a lot of guys out there, see, I don't have that many colonies. We're only running about a dozen colonies right now. I'm gonna give them two patties. These little girls are cranking. I mean, they are cranking. This is not a bad way to go. Cut those round circles that you make up in, in quarters. Then you can divvy them up accordingly to by the size of your colony. And that's not a bad way to go. Keep them in the freezer, like I said. They will not keep outside. They melt on you. So, uh, this is that Carmen Reynolds formula, by the way. Okay, guys, I've got a few more to do here. I got a few more to do here. I got to run to that other bee yard. I got a couple colonies over there. Thanks for stopping in, checking on old Steve O. 
Be happy. Be well. Stay strong. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.